when you come across a problem, you can do it or solve it in many ways. Work energy theorem provides a very easy solution to do very complex problems, at least the ones that look complex. So, how are we going to do these problems? Let us list out some rules. How to get started? Read the problem carefully, draw a schematic diagram, draw a free body diagram if necessary, identify the conservative forces such as gravitational force, calculate the work done by the applied forces and mechanical energies at two points in motion. This may be initial and final locations. Write the work energy relation and solve the problem. The first example that we are taking is of two identical balls which are projected from a tall building with the same initial velocity. Now, the projection can be in any direction. It could be angular, it could be horizontal or any way you like. But the initial velocity must remain the same and they should be from the same height. Now, the question is that what will be the velocity with which it would strike the ground? Now, the general sense says that if you were to project it upwards, then uh, the time taken for it would be more, sure. Then you would also argue or you could argue that maybe the velocity with which it reaches the ground would be different. You would probably divide the motion into segments. How high would it go? Then from there it will come down. What would be the angle at which it is projected, etc., etc. But supposing you were to just use work energy theorem. What would you do in that case? You would consider the initial mechanical energy that you have. So, at the topmost point, you have a certain height for the building and you would say that, okay, if you are projecting it with a velocity of v, then half mv squared plus whatever is the potential energy at that point given by mass of the ball, acceleration due to gravity at the place where the building is and the height from where it is thrown. And also remember that if it is to strike the ground, then just before strike, let us say the potential energy reduces to zero. So, all the energy that is there is converted into kinetic energy. Would that be the case for all the balls? Surely, because they all start with the same energy and therefore, the reason why we are saying that the velocity of strike would be the same for all the balls, whether it was thrown at an angle or otherwise would be the same. So, let us see how this happens. Here is a picture. Now, you imagine the balls thrown out of a window. Each ball is subjected to gravitational force mg after it is thrown. For each, the initial potential energy with respect to the ground is mgh. So, initial potential energy is mgh. Initial kinetic energy for both the balls, let us say we had two only, would be the same which is half mvi square. The balls will land with the same speed. They may not strike the ground at the same time because the initial mechanical energy given by half mvi square plus potential energy initial is equal to half m v final square plus 0. So, therefore, v f is the same for all. Notice we have said that the final energy is equal to the initial energy. That means, we have not considered any kind of energy loss on account of air resistance. Another example we can take. You might have noticed pole vault in which a sprinter or an athlete runs with a big long pole. He runs with the pole and then stops short of a very tall rectangular bracket and the whole energy lifts him to a height above that pole and after that 
he takes advantage of the pole and jumps over it. This pole vault is of course practiced by the sprinter so that he gains more and more potential energy so that he could go higher and higher. So our question now is that in a pole vault an athlete uses a pole to convert the kinetic energy of running into potential energy when the pole is vertical. A good sprinter, let us say, would run at a speed of 10 meters per second, which is about 36 kilometers per hour. How high can the athlete raise his center of gravity before the jump? Now the point is, where is his initial center of gravity? Because the man would have a certain height, let us assume it is 1 meter from the ground. The picture of the pole vault will make you realize which spot we are talking about. Initially say the center of gravity is 1 meter above the ground. Initial potential energy let us say is 0. Initial kinetic energy is equal to half mv square. At the top the final velocity is 0 and the potential energy is some mg capital H as we have taken it because only force of gravity acts on the airborne sprinter. So at the top all the potential energy that he has gets converted into his potential energy. So the final energy is equal to initial energy. Final energy which is only potential energy would be mgh plus 0 for kinetic and initial energy was only kinetic which is half mv square v being the speed with which the sprinter was running. So h is equal to v square by 2g and v is equal to 10 meters per second and let us take g to be 10 meters per second square. So this works out to h equal to 5 meters and as we consider the initial zero value to be at a location 1 meter above the ground. So we would add that to this 5 meters which we have calculated. So approximately 6 meters is the height to which the sprinter raises himself before he jumps over the pole. So the pole vault activity by the sprinter is run with the pole, have enough kinetic energy, top shot of the ring where he has to jump over and then convert all this kinetic energy into potential and jump over. So higher he gets better for him. So that is why 6 meters is a big distance. So with uh, running with only 10 meters per second which is 36 kilometers an hour, he is able to raise himself to about 6 meters before he jumps. Another interesting example and this is about tidal energy. You must have heard that alternative source of energy is utilizing the tidal wave energy and converting that into electrical energy. How that is done is that at high tide when the water rushes into the actuary, what happens is you create a dam, allow a turbine to run over there and when there is low tide, allow this water to rush back into the sea. In doing this activity, the turbine turns and the turning of the turbine causes you to produce the electricity. How then is this work energy theorem being applied over here? Let's take a look at that. Tides are used to generate electrical energy at a dam across the mouth of Rance River in France. In Gulf of Cambay, Gulf of Kutch in India, similar projects are taken up. At a location, the tides rise up to 8.5 meters above the low tide. Across the Gujarat Bay, the tide sometimes rises up to 11 meters also. The river basin is closed off after it fills at high tide and at low tide, the water is allowed to fall on turbines to generate electricity. You can see the low tide and the high tide on your screen and how the water fills up. Now how do we calculate all this? We require the area of the basin in France, the facility which we have considered is 23 square kilometer. 
which is 23 into 10 raised power of 6 meter square. How much work does the falling water do? Falling water from high tide to low tide. Neglect initial and final kinetic energy, assuming them to be the same. Since initial and final kinetic energies are both zero, that means we are not considering them, we calculate the potential energy difference. So the work done by water is equal to potential energy final minus potential energy initially. The point to be noted, initially the top of the water in the basin falls full 8.5 meters. But as the level goes down, it would fall a shorter distance. So the average drop may be considered to be half this value, that means half of 8.5 meters. So let us calculate. Mass of the water would be density into volume. Average drop is half h, which is half of 8.5. So the work done by the applied force is equal to potential energy final minus potential energy initial, which would be just minus mg h by 2. So then we have minus and for mass we have density of water multiplied by the volume into g into h by 2 and if we place it in our formula we get minus half into 1000 kg per meter cube for the density. 23 into 10 raised power of 6 meter square for the volume, 9.8 meters per second square for g and 8.5 meters. So this value comes out to minus 8.14 into 10 raised power of 12 joules, which is a lot of energy able to light up a lot of people's homes, provide electrical energy to them. Work is negative here because water does the work on the turbine. The lost energy may be as sound and thermal. The cost of construction of such facilities is very high and that is the reason why it is not very popular. So you have learned how to recognize the problem and apply your knowledge of work energy relation to solve these. And we have done that for the case of a ball which was thrown from a particular height with the same initial velocity and these would land in different positions at different times but with the same velocity of strike. You also considered another example working out for the pole vault and for the tidal energy makeup.